Hi there. Welcome to the Not Just Another Webinar East Edition series. Today's webinar is about how we transitioned our hiring and onboarding process from in-person to remote over the last few months. If your company is anything like ours, we were used to doing everything in person, and we even provided a physical packet of paperwork to our new employees. Well, in March, our entire company became remote and we had to adapt. Over the last few months, we hired two new employees and we went through most of that process remotely. My goal today is to share how we transitioned and some of the lessons we learned along the way. My name is Melanie Ridlin and I am the Senior Director of Operations at EAST. I have worked at EAST for 18 years now and I've been handling our HR needs for the last nine. Fun fact, my introduction to EAST was through my mother-in-law, who is a former EAST facilitator. I also work closely with the Human Resources Management Association of Arkansas. I am on their board as their president-elect, and they're a really great resource to me in this field. Today's presentation is going to be divided into two topics, virtual interviewing and then onboarding. So let's get started. First, to conduct virtual interviews, you need to figure out what platform you're going to use. There are a ton of platforms that are designed specifically for interviewing, so do some research if you have the time. We didn't, and so we used what we had available to us, and that's Zoom. Last week's webinar covered 10 tricks to tackle Zoom. I'm going to be referencing several of those tricks today, so be sure and check out that webinar if you aren't sure how to do something that I mentioned. All right, before we begin, we are going to make the general assumption that your hiring manager has already narrowed down your applicants to the candidates that are most qualified for the position. All right, so then the next stage is you need to prepare. You need to identify who's going to be on the hiring panel. Is it gonna include your hiring manager, I hope? What about other team members who work closely with that position? If you're hiring for a manager position, do you want to include maybe a direct report so that they can provide input on the candidate? Collaborate when creating your interview questions. At EAST, our hiring manager will develop the interview questions and then they'll share those questions with the panel and HR so we can review them and add any suggestions or edits we might have. We also assign the questions to each person conducting the interview so we all have a role to play during the interview. I'll share the cover letter, the resumes, and any supporting documents for each candidate ahead of time so that the interviewers can become familiar with the candidate. So supporting documents could be like an online portfolio for a graphic designer, or maybe if we're hiring for a web developer, it might look like um, website links to websites they've developed, or an app perhaps. We use Google Drive and I create a folder for each candidate Inside the folder, I also would include a copy of the interview questions for each person so they had access to that. Make sure the team is comfortable using technology, maybe even your candidate. So test your audio and video options, make sure that they're working well. We talked about using the mute button when not talking to eliminate any unwanted background noise. We even update our name in Zoom so that, like mine would say, Melanie Ridlin at East, so that way your candidate can address questions specific to a, a certain person on the panel. Make sure the person leading your interview knows how to use and run the technology. If it falls apart, it can be frustrating for the candidate. It could even be embarrassing for the company, right? We avoid using chat in the Zoom to reduce the risk of sending a message to everyone, including your candidate. So what we do is we use Google Chat instead um, which is really helpful to make comments about maybe skipping a question if your candidate has already answered one earlier on. Meet with the hiring panel to walk through the interview process and answer any questions they might have. This sounds super basic, but we even put a plan in place for introductions. Our very first interview, we did not have a plan in place and it was a bit awkward and there were some awkward silences because the panel didn't know who was supposed to speak up next. So following that first one, we put a plan in place and it would, it would be something like, okay, I'm going to do the welcome and then following me, April, you'll do your introduction next and then Lainey, you'll follow. Okay, and that really helped a lot um, to reduce any of the awkwardness that for every interview after that. 
I'll walk through the process and the flow of the interview with the hiring panel to make sure that they can access the resources and they know where to find their list of questions and everything. And then the other thing we do is we, we work to minimize distractions. So for example, consider your background. In a virtual environment, you really need to think about that. Is it tidy? Do you have a branded background like we do at East for your company to use? What about lighting? Is your face super bright like mine often is uh, because I like to sit in front of a window? Are you home with pets, children, or maybe others that might be a distraction? Our dog likes to bark when somebody walks by or when we ring the door or when somebody rings the doorbell. She also scratches at the door when she wants in or, in or out of the room that I'm sitting in. My six-year-old is super duper cute, but running behind me or, or popping in to ask for a snack during an interview is certainly not ideal. Funny story, we were in an interview and my son totally ran through the room. He went into the room next to me, which is a bathroom, left the door open, used the restroom, flushed, washed his hands, and then ran back through all during an interview. I was super embarrassed because I just assumed everyone on the panel and, assume, and as well as the candidate could hear that, <laughs> but they couldn't and I was so relieved. Um, and so for the next interview, I made sure uh, to try to reduce that possibility again by putting a big, big red sign on the door that said, do not enter, and that seemed to work. So think about what distractions you might have and see what you can do to minimize those before the interview itself. All right, understand the technology. So we've already talked about some things we do within the technology, but a couple of other things to mention. Enable the waiting room when setting up your meeting. This will allow your panel to be fully prepared and ready before inviting the candidate into your Zoom meeting. So when you're setting up your meeting, at the bottom you'll see advanced options and you can just check box, put a check box right there to enable that waiting room. Most of the time, my meetings um, or just general meetings around the office are in gallery view. That's how I like to set mine up. Um, everybody is of equal size on the screen. But for an interview, I prefer to pin the video, um, the video of the candidate. Um, so that way they become the center of my attention. So this is April, our communications coordinator, who so graciously um, helped me with this the other day. But this is an example of her video being pinned. Okay, and you can pin it by um, right clicking on the top right of the candidate's image um, and hitting pin video. Know where your camera is, right? Smile into the camera and make eye contact. By doing this, you are putting that candidate at ease and they really do feel like you're present and you're focused on, on what they're saying. All right, so we've done all this preparation. We know how to use the technology. Now it's time for the interview. So we asked the hiring panel to be in the room 10 minutes early. If for some reason there is a delay, you can always send a direct message to the candidate in the waiting room with any updates. For example, you might say, welcome, we're so glad you're here. We are almost ready and we'll be bringing you into the room here in just a few minutes. That just simple communication will really help the candidate know, okay, A, I'm in the right place, right? But also they're going to be like, okay, it's gonna start in just a few minutes, they haven't forgotten about me. When you're ready, invite your candidate into the room. Go through your introductions as you have planned. Then I'll describe the process and the flow of the interview. I'll say something like, we're going to ask you a series of questions. Feel free to chime in and ask questions along the way, but we'll definitely leave room at the end for you to ask any additional questions you might have. Let the candidate know that you're gonna take some notes during the conversation so that it doesn't look like we're working on other projects. Begin with your questions. Listen, make eye contact, and be patient for answers. Ask if they have any questions. And then finally, talk about next steps. So for example, I would say, we are in our first round of interviews and they're going to continue through next week. We will narrow down our candidates to a top few and I'll be contacting you to either schedule a second interview or to let you know you weren't selected. So don't worry, I'll be contacting you either way. Just that simple bit of communication about next steps is reassuring to that candidate so that they realize you're not going to just leave them hanging. Um, it's always been a surprise to me whenever we hear that candidates often rarely hear from employers 
uh, who they've met with. And so as an HR advocate, I highly recommend you respond and coordinate and communicate with any candidate you've reached out to. All right, then rinse and repeat. Follow that same process for each interview you have. All right, now for the lessons learned. Six virtual interviews, y'all, in one day is way too many. It was exhausting. I would maybe recommend four at most. Give breaks in between to your hiring panel. Um, consider even waiting to debrief until the next day to get everyone's thoughts on the candidate. If you interview maybe on a Thursday or Friday, you might even wait until Monday to interview. Give them a whole weekend. I found that it is easier to view online resources. So that portfolio I mentioned for your designer, or maybe a website for a developer, it's way easier to reference those during an interview and look at them when you're doing an online interview. It can be a little bit more challenging to, or, sorry, it can be a little bit more challenging to read nonverbal cues during an interview. So pay attention, that's where that eye contact comes into play. Have a backup plan for your technology. So my computer crashed. It totally happened, it blue screened on me. And so what I did, thankfully I had my phone nearby and I sent a quick chat to the other members of the hiring panel and I just let them know what was going on. Um, they continued the interview. Um, they let the candidate know what happened and they just continued and it worked out just fine. I jumped back in when I could and then we debrief later. What about if you have a candidate that has poor video quality or internet issues? We had this happen to us and we just simply asked the candidate to um, hang up from the Zoom call, the video call, and then call in using the audio, like an audio option um, and their phone and that worked so much better. So think about what possibilities might come up and have a plan in place for those. This last question was posed to me a few weeks ago from a colleague in the HR field and I thought it was a good one. He asked, should you meet with a candidate in person before you offer the job? And so I'd like to ask you guys that over in the chat and let me know what you think. Should you meet the candidate in person before offering a job? Is there a risk to only interviewing online? So his point was he thinks it really depends on the job they're applying for. If they're a customer service uh, rep, that regularly will meet with your clients face to face, it may be important to interact with them face to face before actually offering the job. And there may be other positions and titles um, that, that you'd want to consider meeting in person before, but I thought that was a really interesting point and something I thought I'd throw out there for you guys as well to consider. Okay, let's move on to onboarding. So the first day at a job can be really stressful for a new, new employee. So I'd like to ask you into the chat, so drop it over to the chat for me. What tricks do you use to put a new employee at ease? So at East, I'll coordinate with a hiring manager to determine what the employee's first day will look like. Then I'll put together an email titled, What to Expect Your First Day for the New Employee. I'll send it out a few days in advance and it will include any documentation they need to bring and a tentative agenda like the one I'm putting here on the screen for you. So the employee's first day at East will typically begin on site. So even while the rest of this has been remote, this very first portion of their day, we want to be on site specifically so we can provide them with their equipment. So I'll give them a welcome gift, um, like an East branded tumbler, or maybe even this teal East branded East t-shirt. And um, waiting in their email will be a welcome to the team digital card. The hiring manager will offer a brief tour of the office and help the employee gather office supplies. So if they're going home, they might need notebooks, pens, sticky notes, things like that. I'll make a copy or scan in a copy of their I-9 documentation. The director of IT will sit down with the employee to go over and check out the equipment. There's a staff photo that we take for our website and for our social media. We like to announce the new employee to our East Network. So the email I provide to the, to the employee will give the employee advance notice of this. Um, we might even suggest, hey, if you'll wear a solid color, that would be great. And, and then I'll tell them that we even take a fun photo in addition to the professional photo. We have props on hand, but I'll allow them to bring in props if they have some that they prefer to use. We had a great uh, new employee the other day start and she brought in a, a sloth costume. 
uh, to wear. And I thought that was awesome. Then we'll help them pack up their things so that they can grab lunch and get set up um, at home. After the employees all set up at home, we'll begin with some new employee orientation and some training. So the first meeting will, has been a new hire packet orientation um, where it's a one-on-one -on -one with me and I'll give them a chance to kind of go through that new hire packet. And I'm gonna show you guys that here in a minute. And then they'll have a meeting with our CEO who provides an introduction to our organization and our culture. Um, assuming we have a little bit of leftover time, they'll meet and check in with their supervisor and their team as well before their end of their day. We have really been fortunate that our employees are local and asking them to pop into the office to collect their equipment has worked out fine. But if your employee is unable to come by the office, you can make alternate arrangements to get the equipment to them. You could even mail the welcome gift and provide the equipment set up training virtually. So we had to figure out how to digitize our new hire packet, right? Do you guys use a digital new hire packet at your company or is it a physical paper packet? Let me know in the chat. Previously, I would hand the new employee a physical new hire pa packet with pamphlets and forms to fill out. It was really important that I figure out how to convert that physical packet to a digital format. To make this work, I used four different digital systems. We also, like Zoom, had DocuSign available to us. And so that's what I used and I created pack like two different packets. The first packet was specific to the candidate and it included the offer letter and the job description. I also encrypted this packet. The second packet was designed as a template and it included supplemental insurance options, policy acknowledgement forms and more. The great thing though is that this packet can be reused for other future employees. There's an insurance election portal. Um, for us, it's called Bernie Portal that our uh, broker uses, um, where the employee can go in and elect various insurance options. They would access our payroll system to complete their I-9, direct deposit, and then state and federal tax forms. And then finally, our fourth system was Google Drive. I created a Google Drive folder that provided a bunch of digital resources for the employee. So it may not be something they need to sign, but maybe it's um, details on our retirement options so that they could read about it before they decide how much they want to contribute. Or perhaps it's various supplemental um, insurance options with rate information, and it's the information before they decide if they want to sign up or not. Okay, so we used four different systems. The biggest challenge for me, though, was to figure out how to communicate where the employee would find everything and make it really easy for them to follow. So what I did is I updated our standard new hire checklist based around where to find the information to provide clarity for the employee. I also included when I needed the information back. So for example, the I-9 has a three business day turnaround requirement. And so I make sure to include that detail on the new hire checklist. Before I gave this over to our very first new virtual employee, right, I asked other staff to look it over and provide feedback, which really helped me tremendously. On the first day, oh, let me actually first, let me pull up the new hire checklist so you can get an idea of what this looks like. And I'll also put it over into the chat for you too. So it looks like this. I tried to tailor it a little bit more generally so you could quickly modify it if you wanted to. Um, so there's the docs, DocuSign packet one, the payroll system for the state, federal tax, direct deposit, I-9. Again, notice that it talks about these need to be back within three business days. The Google Drive folder with the new hired digital packet. DocuSign 2 and all the documents that are included within it. This is that template I mentioned. And then what they would sign up for in the insurance portal. Okay, so I'm gonna again, put this in the chat for you to reference and use and modify if you'd like to. On their first day, I'll spend some time walking through the four systems and the new hire checklist with that employee just to make sure that they understand where to find things and that it's pretty clear and they can ask any questions. And then once they've wrapped up the new hire process, I'll ask for feedback. What's the process easy to follow? What tweaks should be made um, to make it easier the next time? And then I'll incorporate those changes. I plan to continue to use the digital version of the new hire packet moving forward. Ideally, I'd love for everything to be in one system, and I really do hope that someday we'll get there. 
All right. And then what does onboarding look like after that? Our spans over the employee's first two weeks, and it's about nine hours in total. The employee will meet with various departments to learn more about the company and how their position will work closely together with them. So we call them orientations. We simply transition these orientations to virtual meetings through Zoom. We could record them for future use and they're also available as a resource to others. When we were in person, we would typically take the new employee to lunch and invite our entire staff to join us. To do this remotely, we've been hosting a virtual get to know the team lunch with our whole staff. Um, lessons learned, here's our lessons learned tip on this one. Tip on this one. Um, maybe send a digital gift card for a meal along with what, that what to expect email and mention the staff lunch that'll typically happen for us on day two. That way the employee can prep, get their meal ahead of time and it's on East, um, not on them. So that's what I would suggest and that's what we're gonna try to do next time. Okay, any questions? Uh, that's my wrap up of virtual interviewing and onboarding for you. Please put your questions in the chat and I'll be sure and respond. While you're working on your questions, let me provide a quick bit of information about EAST for those of you that might be unfamiliar with us. EAST is an educational nonprofit headquartered here in Little Rock, Arkansas. We put industry grade technology into schools and co-ops and challenge students and other lifelong learners to go out and solve problems that they find in their community. With nearly 270 programs spanning across Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Pennsylvania, we provide all learners with the opportunity to have relevant, individualized, and life-changing educational experiences. Thanks again for tuning in. Before you leave, don't forget to take the survey. The link is now in the chat. Join us on Facebook Live for our next non-webinar over editing content for your podcast. It's on June 25th with April Jackson and Jerry Prince. You can even watch it later if you'd like on YouTube. If you have any questions about EAST or maybe you want to partner with us, contact us at eastlink.me slash join EAST. To learn more about what EAST students are doing in their community, follow us on social media at the EAST Initiative or visit our website at eastinitiative.org. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.